Here's why data is so important in your real estate investment business or investing business itself. So let me give you some examples. What most people tend to do is they get into their market and they start advertising and they start sending out postcards, just like their, their general area. And they say, hey, I'm a real estate investor. I love to buy your property. Just very general. So they'll send it out to a direction. Maybe it's in their location. Maybe it's in their um, their neighborhood, things like that. They'll put out signs. I'm looking to buy properties cash. Or if they're an agent, they're advertising on bus stops, things like that. The challenge with that is there's no decision-making power that is critical for that person to want to move. And so in a market where it, there really has to be some life changes happening, you're really just generally spending money on marketing that could yield to zero to no results. And the greatest benefit is when you're really focusing on data. And here's what I mean by data. Okay, so in the, in the world today, right, there's very, very low inventory. So San Diego itself, um, Southern California for the most part, but San Diego has about two weeks of what we call inventory. So when, let's say, a property is put on the market, there's about two weeks of houses that if all the houses in two weeks, nothing else was put on the market, two weeks, all the houses would be gone. That's what that means, which is crazy. And so a lot of people don't have a reason to move. Their interest rates are low. They like where they live. Their property's appreciating. Okay, so unless there's a life event happening. So here's where the data is so freaking important. So data is this. Let's say, for example, that person has high equity. That's data, okay? High equity, a lot of people have high equity. That's very general. Okay, but fine. Now we're looking for triggering events. Let's say they are an absentee homeowner. Okay, absentee homeowner is somebody who is a rental owner. And guys, we buy on average, right now we're in escrow on six properties. Every single one of them is absentee homeowners. They're over owning their property. They're sick of tenants not paying rent. They're sick of owning the house. And they're just over it. They don't want to deal with tenants anymore. They don't want to deal with the drama. They just want to cash out their equity and they want to move on. So that's a data set. So you might look at high equity plus absentee homeowner, okay? Another data set, which is really valuable, is what we call a tired landlord. Same type of thing. They could have no equity, okay? So the equity necessarily doesn't necessarily matter when looking to acquire property. We could talk about creative finance, what that looks like in another video. But if they are a tired landlord, it means they've owned the property for at least 10 years, Okay, so if you've ever owned a rental for at least 10 years, or you've owned an investment property for even as five years or seven years, same type of feeling. You start to get irritated with owning that rental. Maybe you have a better use for that capital elsewhere. So tired landlord, high equity, absentee homeowner, those are what we call data sets. Another data set that's really common amongst investors is notice of defaults. Okay, notice of default, which means somebody has been 90 days behind in their mortgage, at least 90 days, and now their lender, okay, to use general terms, their lender has filed a notice of default with the seller and also the county saying that quote unquote owner has not paid their mortgage, all right, or lien, uh, person on their loan, and we're filing a default. There's now about 120 days from default is filed to when there could be a foreclosure sale date. Okay, foreclosure sale date is about 120 days past. So now think about this when it comes to the data. Okay, back to data. Let's say you're saying, Daniel, I'm really focused on data stacking so I can generate a higher, a higher likelihood of a sale. Okay, like I said, people only, you only deal with motivated sellers. There's a motivating situation, a motivating timeline, um, and we can find a pain point. If there's not a pain point, there really is no reason for them to move. You know, and on the retail side of things, it could just be they want to change school districts or whatever. But when it comes to the investing side of things, there has to be pain. Okay, so here's what pain can be. Let's say, for example, they're high equity, they're in default, and they're a tired landlord. That is what we call data stacking. When you're calling on those types of lists, data stacking lists, those are high, high value type of properties and deals because there's likely going to end up in a sale at some point. You could also think about on the data side, let's say, for example, you want it, you're more of an agent. You're kind of trying to go after or creative deals. You're looking at expired listings. Someone couldn't sell the property. Maybe they wanted too much for the property. And maybe if you come in with a creative offer, you can, you can move that, you can move the needle. Expired listing, high equity, tired landlord, absentee homeowner. 
they're in default. Oh, they could even be probate, for example. So now you're stacking these different types of lists. And now let's say, for example, you pulled a data set of San Diego. You said, I want every single one of these categories. Absentee homeowner, someone who's you know uh, had it for at least 10 years, they're in default. Um, and it has it's in it's in its 1950 or older build or 1960 or older. So it's an older house. Mm -hmm. So now let's say, for example, most people do is they'll pull a list of even a tired landlord, they might only have they might have 30,000 different records. That's a lot. But now when they start to stack that data, they're they're also these things. There might be 150, 250, 350, but a smaller amount of data sets. That gives you the ability to make less calls, but hyper efficient to be able to perform and get a cash deal accepted or a listing accepted with the seller. All, all it is is thinking targeted on what your market is likely going to need. And then if you're calling on those lists, what scripts do you need? What are you going to say to them when you, when you get their phone number and you pick up the phone? We've been doing this now for years where I started this business about five years ago. And what I started to do was really think about the data and how important and critical it was to find these cash deals. Everyone's always asked me, Daniel, where do you find these opportunities? How do you find them? How do you come across them? Data is the answer. So in now probate, is when someone dies without a trust or a will. Okay, that's a probate transaction. And I know that goes to, comes to become a public issue and they have to hire a probate attorney. And then that person brings in a trustee and a trustee is now in charge of the estate to sell that property. These fit in a lot of buckets. So you might be thinking, how do I find and prospect and market? We can help. And it's all about the data sets. So if you're interested, please click the link in the bio. I'm open to helping you guys get involved in the real estate investment journey and we can actually help you find those contacts and drive way more leads and types of deals into your inbox and contacts that are the right accurate way to look at the market direct sellers are not just a general area you can target a general area but you're only going to do so much because it's very it's it's not a targeted approach so targeted approach comes down to hitting the right data hitting it consistently not overwhelming yourself with um, too many opportunities, defining that and, and stacking that data so you have just a targeted group to prospect and market to. And then you're going to prospect and cater your message, whether you door knock it, whether you phone call, whether you send mailers, whether you're looking to do SEO marketing, all that stuff can come into the right set. Now, for free, you can go ahead and market that. So if you're interested in buying data with us, which I'm absolutely helpful and we'd love to provide to you, uh, we will throw in uh, 250 NODs, notice of defaults, as well. So we'll give you any data set you're interested in, plus 250 notice of defaults. These are very motivated, potential motivated sellers that can help drive your real estate investment business. If you're interested in learning more, subscribe to the YouTube channel. My name is Daniel Tremello, San Diego Investor of the Year 2023, and love, love to help you and explore your investing journey.